computer. But anyway, we are going to get busy today. We have a super fun card, something not Christmas again. I thought I would pull something else out of the catalog. And this is what we're going to be creating. Oh, this is the envelope. And then here's the card. So, so many times I need a masculine card. Yay, Kathy. I'm glad you're here. So, so many times I want to do a, a masculine card. And when I saw the plaid paper in the 6x6, six six, I knew I just had to have it because there's so many things we could do with it. And uh, creating a masculine card is perfect. And I've been wanting to use the By the Dock stamp set. So let me show you some of the items we're going to use. Our plaid paper is called Plaid Tidings. It's six by six um, and in the designer series paper. And the number is 153527. We're going to be using By the Dock dies uh, stamp set and it's 151622. All of this will be listed in my blog and it's listed below in the description. The dies are the dock side dies, 151618. And the birch stamp set is 149256. And this is a background stamp set. It's gorgeous for so many things. And today we're going to use it for something a little different. So I'm going to set all of that aside. I do too, Kathy. I think it's a perfect set. A lot of the masculine cards that I do, hi to Shauna, a lot of the um masculine cards i end up doing are fishing theme of some kind i have a lot of fishing people in my life but i thought this was really cute there's no fish not in this card it's just a relaxing day on the boat or going to the to the lake so i thought this was really cute i did add a fish there just to kind of tie it in but we could put another little frog there or just leave it alone but I thought, you know, it kind of looks like the fish is jumping out of the water saying happy birthday. I thought that was kind of cute. So I'm going to show you some different techniques that I did on this card. So we're going to set that aside and get busy. We have a lot to do. So I used the shaded spruce. Again, I'm going to list all the, um, the products that I use will be on my blog and they're listed below too. Shaded Spruce is the color I used and the Soft Suede. I went ahead and already used the Hammered uh, Metal Embossing Folder, which is 150646. And I created just some texture and you can see it here just in the background. I thought it kind of looked like scales a little bit. So I thought it kind of tied in with the frogs. And so I thought that was kind of a masculine look. So I went with that. So I already did that and we'll put that aside. We are going to start creating and doing some stamping with our By The Dock stamp set. And it is red rubber. So we are going to use our nice big block here. I'm using E. You could also put it, let's see, I, I don't think I have the block with me. Oh yeah, maybe. Let's see. This one you could use. It's a little close on the edge up here for the bird, but you probably could get away with this one, which is I. But E to me, um, it's a pretty good size stamp. So I think E is a good choice and you can use this for a lot of images. So I'm gonna use that one and then I'm going to use my D, which is probably my favorite size block. I'm going to put the boat on and I'm just going to do those for now. I'm going to do the or, oh, it looks like I forgot to put my sticker on it. So let me do that really fast. I will put my sticker on. So again, if you haven't seen me put them on, I put them on the block face down, take the little sticker sides off. Turn it over. I'm going to try not to stick my head in the way here. And then I just stick it down on the block. And then it's set. So we'll just leave it on that block. All right. So we'll do that for now. So what I did is on the dock, I used soft suede. 
and it's just random pick some colors that you like i just didn't want to use black i wanted to kind of make it a little more soft and honestly i'm not sure i'm looking at the colors thinking i use soft suede and it looks like i may have went darker i may have used uh, or lighter i may have used crumb cake but that's okay it's all in it just really doesn't matter as long as you get the colors you know scheme in there and i wanted to use the browns so i'm going to switch it and i'm going to use the boat then and do that in crumb cake i just want the colors to be a little different between the boat and the dock so it just doesn't look like one big blob of one color. So, and you're going to die cut these out. So just kind of make sure that they're away from each other. It gives you enough, plenty of space. All right. So I used that. I think I'm going to use, since I did the boat a lighter color, I'm going to use early espresso for my oars. So let me move those out of the way. Yeah, let's do early espresso for our oars. The frog is cute stuff. There's two little frogs in this set. All right, let's see. So we have our oars. We're going to do two. One. Two. So we're going to start out with that. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the frog too while I'm here get everything on here cut so let's pull out our little frog so I used this little frog here and we're going to do some super quick coloring with this now I did the frog in black find my memento All right, here we go. We'll do our little frog down here. And that is it until we get to our sentiment and we'll deal with that a little bit later. All right, we got everything cleaned up. So now what I did is I brought in my blends. I love my blends. My Stampin' Blends are fantastic. So just kind of look at the colors and what you have. I brought in the bronze and I'm switching up the colors a little bit. So I'm going to look at this and I'm just going to take this darker color and kind of just, this is the bronze and I'm just going to kind of just put some little marks on there. Nothing, nothing crazy. And you could just kind of go over the lines because we're going to shade it with a different color. So you might want to just add just a little texture to it. And so I just kind of follow what Stamping Up has. You can see on the side they have a little darker hash marks. So I'm just going to go down the side with the darker color. I love the bronze and the ivory blends, you guys. They're great. They really are, Kathy. I love them. All right. So you're just going to kind of color that in. And then I'm going to do the darker down here, too. Because I'm going to fill it in lighter. So I'm just kind of... And it's all in what you want. I just kind of try to think about, all right, I want to accent it. I don't want it to all look one color. So I'm going to put some darker. Now that's water, and then your dye does not cut that out. So don't worry about that. All right, so I'm good with that. I'm going to take my light um, smoky 
slate and I'm just going to color the bird a little gray. Just kind of color him in softly. Now I did not do my stamping on shimmer. So you be really careful about going over it too, too much. All right. I think I'm going to take the light soft suede and color the deck in. So you can see the two colors just kind of blend, but still you have that bronze color as a different color, like kind of an accent color. So you don't want to blend it a whole lot, but just enough Because you know how wood ages and looks a little. All right. So down here, I just go out a little bit because it's going to cut. The die is going to cut where it wants to. And just I just want to make sure it's got color. And then this is going to be water down here. But like you see on the die, it just cuts it off. So I'm just going to do it all brown just to make sure it gets all the dock in brown. All right, now I'm just gonna bring in probably my dark crumb cake and just color in the rope. And it's not gonna look that big of a difference on screen, but it looks a little different than the other two colors in person. All right, so just those two right here and over here. I'm just going to go over it two times. All right, so our dock is done. You see how it has the two different tones? Oh, I'm glad you caught us live. All right, so it has the two tones right there. So it's all a matter of what you want it to be, darker, lighter, whatever. Now I'm going to take the dark suede. Um, yeah, I'll do the dark suede. Let's see, because I think it's a little darker and just kind of again, do your lines and you don't have to do them all. I'm going to do the inside, the rim of the boat here and just kind of go down. Fill that in. So it's just, I mean, you just pick and choose. It's just kind of, just think that you want your other color to kind of be the main color. And these are the seats right here. So I'm going to do the seats a little darker. So you can definitely tell the difference. All right. So I think that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to take the soft suede, I'm thinking, but I'm going to test it. And that's too close, I think. So I'm going to take the light crumb cake and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, they're both alcohol inks. So as long as it's an alcohol ink, they'll blend really well. The reason, and I have a lot of Copix, um, almost all of them, but I really like how the the blend the stamp and blends match the paper the dsp it just really ties it all really well together i also like that it is really you don't even really have to think about it you can use the light and the dark of the same shade so if you used you know the light crumb cake and the dark crumb cake there's not a lot of thinking about it whereas copics there's you know three different shades and you just really have to think about you know, which shade are you going to use and which, you know, it doesn't really go light and dark. There's different numbers for everything. And you're like, oh, there's just a lot to think about. Where this to me is just really a no brainer. All right. So there we go. And I'm good with that boat. All right. And they look a lot alike. So I'm going to bring in some bronze. That's just too too close for me. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of bronze. And I am going to just outline some of what I did with the darker, but it just didn't come out as dark for me. 
and I'm just going to do it a little bit more. I think I originally stamped this one much darker and I am going to restamp it because I don't like it. It's just not, I want to make sure I'm not using the right piece. So I'm going to use, I'm going to restamp this and I'm going to stamp it in the espresso. I don't like them to be that close together in color. And of course, when I did the card, you know, you don't write down what you used for what you just keep all the markers out and I thought oh this would be a cute card to do on the video so I'll do that and now I'm like okay that's just too close together in color so I'm going to do it a little bit different and now the dimension you can tell the coloring is just a lot darker and so your coloring is just so little whereas it was so light it just seemed like I had to do a lot and I didn't like it so we're just going to do this one instead. And guess what? We can do that. And I'm going to shade this part down here because it's down below. Oh, I'm trying to not get my head in the screen, you guys. I tried to move the camera some, so. But. All right. So I'm liking that. And I think I did a little bit up here. All right, I like this a lot better. And I will do the benches. All right, we're liking this better. And I'm gonna take my light. Crumb cake. Gonna blend it in. All right, I like this bit a lot better. I didn't like the lighter color because I wanted to see the the little all the little wood. So that I'm much happier with. So we're gonna stick with that boat. And the oars, I think I just took the light crumb cake just to kind of give them a little color. Super easy. The frog, the same thing. I took the dark mossy meadow and I kind of went where they had the little markings and just kind of did a little, a little um, darker green just to give them a little bit of color. And then I took the lighter mossy meadow and I colored him in. And I'm just dabbing because he's so tiny. You just want to make sure you get them all colored. But around the edges, just kind of dab. And you're going to be, I think I had to die cut him out. I don't think there was a die for him. Oh, yeah, maybe there is. All right. almost done with him and we're just about done with our coloring and I want to show you what I did with the really cool background all right so there he is he's got some spottings on him you don't want it too dark so just kind of blended him in a little bit all right so let's die cut these out We are going to use the dock. We have rolling blackouts here, you guys, for our weather, for our PG&E, our electricity. So hopefully we'll keep our power. We haven't had any, we've had our power flicker a couple times but we have not had it go out yet. 
So in this set, you could do your ores and have them with the green in them if you do the embossed with a die. But I just did the stamping, being that I was doing a lot of stamping anyway. And what's nice is they give you two dies. One stamp, but two dies. So you can be cutting out both of them at the same time. And again, I just use repositionable tape. And you can tell these pieces of tape are used until they start falling apart. The background is a little bit different. They do give you, in the stamp set, they give you these waves right here. So you could use those. Let me die cut these out really quick. So my see my tape when I told you it still my tape falls apart it just fell apart so we'll just leave that up there. All right, so it was a really quick and easy coloring. And there's my ore. And my other ore, and you can see that this ore got a little crazy, kind of moved a little bit on me on the bottom. So I'm just going to cut it a little bit closer. And around. No, I don't like that. Doing it again. One ore coming up. One more or well, how funny this is light crumb cake. Where did my crumb cake go? Here we go. All right. All right, let me cut this one out real quick. Take our frog off. All right, I'm die cutting this. So we have our cut pieces. Now for the background, what I did for the water is that's where the birch comes in for the background. And I'll show you what I did because I thought I wanted something, I was gonna stamp all that water with all those little waves and then I thought, well, if I could use something else so I looked and had this birch background so what did I do with my birch background oh here it is all right so what I'm going to do is pull it out I am going to ink it up with the seaside a seaside spray and I'm just going to do the top part so if you're looking at the image 
to me this all kind of looks like water and I like that it's just in sporadic spaces don't do this part down here because that of course looks like the birch of a tree so keep with the top part and just ink up the top and then what I did is I took a piece of paper I took my my background, my seam, and just lay it down. Take a piece of paper on top, which I think I just stuck that in the ink, and then just press it. And then lift it up, and then that's my background for my water. And I'm not done with it yet, so let me show you you can see I did some extras here from another project and I just left them in here in case I need to have a background that's in a brown or gray then I have some done already all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in, I have Balmy Blue and I have Seaside Spray. I'm gonna pull in my pad. Let me put my frog over here so he doesn't get lost. And I forgot I need this little guy and this too, so I'll be putting those out in a second. And then I lay it down and then what I do is I take one of my brushes here, the blue, my blue, and it has, it has old navy, or old navy, um, night of navy in here too. I've used it before, but it's just, I mean, you really have to press hard to get that out. So I'm going to go to my seaside spray and just starting from the outside and just kind of come in and you're just going to keep going until you get the color you want. So I just round it. I'm going to get some more. Okay, so I want a little bit of that darker color in there. And this, this gives it like a little bit of a purple hue. So it just gives it a deeper... And make sure you do it all over and don't push really hard. You just want to try to pick up the ink evenly so you don't get any spots that have no ink. And just keep going until you get it a little bit even with these two with this color. All right, and I'm happy with that tone. So now I'm just going to kind of wipe it off. And you have to really push to start seeing any color coming out of it now. So I'm good with that. And now I'm going to bring in some balmy blue. And I'm going to do the same thing. Lightly pick some up. Start on the outside and work your way in. It's going to add that more vivid blue color but it actually kind of gets to a darker color because you're mixing it with the other blue. And so you're gonna have a really pretty watercolor. And you can still see the waves, they're not super out there. I mean, you could emboss them. You could probably um, emboss them in white even so that it's white in the background or clear so that it's white behind that and it'll look like little water caps. So just kind of keep going until you get the color you want. Be careful. You want to make sure your hands are clean, remember, because you will leave fingerprints on here. And you don't want that. All right. And I am pretty good with this image 
All right, and I just kind of make sure I wipe my brush off and angle it so that you get all of the around part off. And I'm good with that. And then I always try to wipe up my edges because when you're brushing, I try to keep my ink pads somewhat clean. So otherwise you get ink all over because it'll be all over here. So just that's just kind of what I like to do. All right, so now I'm going to take this little image here and I'm going to do white and I'm going to do my little frog and I'm going to run those through my machine. And I'm doing them white because I prefer to color them than I do to do them in colored paper. I just think they look a little more realistic. So here is my first image. It has that little cattail, a foxtail, cattail on there, cattail. And my little frog. And then I'm going to run this through again. You want three of these. So you want three of your images here for your. your ground and the sand and the greenery. Oh, I love sponging too, Tashana. It just adds so much. All right, so there is number two. And the reason it's three is because I, I did a landscape card and that part you wanna kind of fill it all in on the bottom, kind of like you're at the dock up on the shoreline. And let me grab another piece of white to do one more. And this is where your scrap pieces come in handy. This is what I'm pulling out here so I can do another one. All right, so there's three. really love the plaid paper it just really adds I think to this card all right so here we go here's our last one all right so for you guys that I told that you if you remember that I was doing my nails right well I did my first set with this new at home dip product and now I just did my second set and I'm thinking I'm probably not going to go to the salon anymore I mean I'm getting better at it but being that we don't have a salon to go to right now all right I'm just going to use this scratch side right here but they're getting better I'm getting a little more practice all right, so right now I'm going to color, I'm going to fussy cut this frog out first because I took him all the way down to just look like a frog with no outline. So let me just cut him down really fast. And you don't have to be exact because I have a little secret. So just cut him, my head in the way again. I'm trying not to get my head in the way. When I went to my eye doctor, I should have said, I need super glasses that I don't have to lean in and cut and color. So my head's not in the way. Sometimes it's funny when you're trying to angle stuff when you're on a camera. All right, so my little frog is just about cut out. And then what I do is I take a black marker and let's see, which one did I use? I have a little one. You know, let me grab my other, my small one. And you 
can use black or gray. Let's see, what did I grab? I got black. So I'm going to take my marker and I always come in from the back. Oh, hi, Carol. Yeah, I'm, I really love this set too. And it pairs perfect with the plaid. All right, so I just go around and I'm just coloring the, the white that's in the background. So it's either going to be a shadow or his outline. So I just go around. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I just kind of color in the white with the black marker. And just kind of do an outline. All right, so there's my little frog. He still has a couple little spots that I need to, to color in. All right, so there he is. So you can kind of see on here when I did it around the background. And then, so you just color him. So that, he's done. Now for this guy, so what I did, you're going to line them all up. All right, the first thing I did is my frog. And so what I did is I took my light mossy meadow and I colored my frog. So just color him. Okay, so now he's colored. Let me move him over here so you can see him. And so now what I did is I took my dark mossy meadow and you take the skinny part and I just added some little dots. Just add little dots on him, just like a, like a frog. All right. And now you're going to take your light mossy meadow again and just go over him. It just kind of like blends those darker ones a little bit more and it makes the frog just a little bit of a darker color. All right. So there he is there. And I'm going to go just a couple of dots, just so he has different shaded dots like that. And now I did the same thing. Take a dark pen. You want him outlined so you can really see him. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I don't think I used black. I think I used the mossy meadow. So take the small end. And just kind of go around and remember it's alcohol so it may saturate a little bit so you want to kind of do it quickly so just kind of go around and outline it does not have to be perfect you're gonna see it even though you think you won't once you put it up against something you can see how you can see the front but not the rest of them so just take it around quick and his little legs and his feet. I like to do it on down just so you can do it fast and you're against something so you know you're just getting the edges because if you move them you can see. All right so now you can see him a little bit better with his little outline all right, so I'm going to do this one little leg I think I missed. All right, so I'm going to set him aside. So now everything is ready there. Now, for this, I took the bronze, and that is what I did the, let me see. I'm going to do the fox, fox tail, cat tail, right? Cat tail. With that. Then I'm going to take the dark crumb cake and I'm going to do the stem and coming up the top of the stem. Let me get a better cut. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the stem and the top. On the stem 
Okay. Now I took the light crumb cake and I went around the bottom and just kind of make your own pattern there. And then you've got these little tiny cutouts. Let's see if you can see. I have the weirdest light right here. The little tiny cutouts right here across the image. And so you want to take these and just color them in like it's sand or dirt. And I just kind of go all the way across, all the way up into those little images, just like that's the sand or dirt. I'm pretending I'm in Avila Beach. So this is going to be the beach at the lake. All right. So just do them all. And this is what I like about doing multiples too, is you do everything like this at once. This is all on one card, but even if you were making multiples, just sit here and do all this color, then all the next one. And before you know it, all you gotta do is have the Hallmark Channel on and watch your Christmas movies. I was just telling my friend today how funny that all of the Hallmark movies seem, it's the same story, but yet I watch them all. Will she take the job? Will he take the job? Will they get married? Because now she found somebody else. All right. And I think I used the light Mossy Meadow. And I think that might be too dark. I think I used the light, yeah, Old Olive. No, it was the Mossy Meadow. All right. So the light Mossy Meadow. And you can choose whatever color you want. And then I just do the grass. All right, so we are just about ready to assemble. one down so see how much more natural that looks than if you were to do it in paper and I guess you could do it in paper like I would cut the brown out where all those little knots are and then I would probably layer it up on top of like a mossy meadow or old olive or whatever color you choose and I would layer that up on top of each other but then you've got to layer your cattail on top too and and if you wanted a paper piece that would look amazing but I didn't want to do that for the video but that would be a really cute look if I was just doing one card or so all right there's two and almost done It's funny, I did bring this set out, um, Carol, before, and I was kind of messing around with it, and I was like, I just did not like what it was coming up. You know how that is. You start creating with something, and you have something in your mind, and then once you start playing with it, you're like, oh, no, okay, put that away. Pull, get something else out. So that's what I did. But now I had the plaid paper, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I've got to come up with something. Because I just wanted to use that plaid paper so bad. All right. Now what I'm doing is, and I, what I usually do is I always create my scene before I adhere stuff together. So what I did first is I did do my dock. So we're going to bring in some glue. And I think I, yeah, I put my dock flat because I wanted to put my boat up and I didn't want to put my boat above my dock and worry about too much height. And I wanted the dock to kind of, the boat to be above the dock. 
All right, so I'm going to pull in my silicone mat so I don't get glue all over. All right, so I'm looking at my water, and I want my water, I have more water marks up here than down here, so I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to put my dock about mm, I want my bird to kind of be you got to get your bird to be straight up and down because he's on a stick right you don't want it slanted all right so I'm going to do that I'm going to do my boat next Do you guys have rolling blackouts where you guys are at, where your electricity goes out? I was just mentioning that earlier because we have them here. All right, I'm going to put my boat right along the dock. I'm going to put my little frog out there with my little tiny dimensionals. I love the mini dimensionals. I'm going to put it right on him. Let me just trim that little tiny piece of dimensional off. So he is going to be jumping right out from where the boat's at. All right, now what I did with this is I wanted this to be over here because I wanted this to just kind of be so you can see it. So I'm going to glue this. Right about there. Okay. And then this one, I'm just going to bring all the way across. Now, I'm going to put glue on the very bottom so that it's sticking, but on none of the grass because the grass is going to kind of be up in front of the boat. Okay, so the boat's there, but it's kind of closer to the dock. But I wanted it to kind of be in together there. And then on this one, I just came over. Oops, I missed a little green spot. There we go. Same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of right here. And you can just overlap whatever you want right there. All right, so for the glue that I got up here, I just take my little pokey tool and just, it comes right off. All right, so there's that. And now you're going to turn it over and cut off the part you don't need. I don't cut off the, the green leaf up here. I do cut off the back part of the dock. And so I leave it like that. And you can always save these for another day. So I will save these and put them in my uh, stamp set so that I have those. All right, now I want my little frog. So I need another little dimensional. I'm just going to set him over here, right where these two overlap each other. And he's just going to be right there. I don't know why he looks like he's got a little white spot right there. All right, so there's our frog. And then the oars, I'm going to go ahead and glue this now. And then we'll put the oars on. I, I'm a little bit more generous with the glue on here because it's going on to a textured area. All 
and I'm not done with it so I'm just gonna let it sit here I don't push super hard yet I want the the glue to kind of dry a little okay so we're gonna leave that there and now we need to put our oars and I just use the little mini glue dots or uh, dimensionals and I'm going to use two. I don't use it on the back end. And so I put this one kind of just coming out of the water. And then I used this one. And I just have this one kind of laying inside the boat. Like, there's no person there, right? So they're, they've gone to go check on something. So they just left their boat. Probably going to get a drink or gas. All right. Now what I did is I, I'm going to stamp the image. So I used the happy birthday that's in the set. And I'm going to pull out the little fish. All right, so the fish I'm going to put on here. And I'll put the happy birthday. On the smaller block here. All right, Tashana, thank you. I know I'm a boater. We don't run out of gas. Are you kidding? All right. So, um, I don't know that it's going to fit on here. I'm going to grab another piece. And I'll just use this piece here. So what I did is I used the one and a quarter and I'm going to put the, the same towards the top. Okay. And then I used the one and a half and I used the same color. Now I believe the one and a quarter is not available anymore. Um, but if you have a one and a quarter stand, uh, punch, that's what I used for the sentiment. And then I'm going to use the same, the shaded spruce. Now I'm going to stamp my little fish at the bottom. And now what I did is I used a little bit of my light peacock. So I just kind of went in a little on the colors and just kind of dabbed it. I'm going to do the light balmy blue and just kind of add a little bit of water and where the water is at here. And then I went in with the light old olive and I just blended with the peacock to make him a pretty bluey green color. All right, so there's my fish. We will glue these. Where is my lid? Oh, I know I'm going to stick my arm right in that. All right, so we're going to take this and glue it. I like to use the liquid glue on this so I, if I need to move it around and center it. This one's probably starting to dry. It gets a little tacky, the glue, and kind of firms up a little so that it won't smush out the sides. But I really want to make sure that it's on there with the textured background okay so 
we're going to add this last. We're going to take this out. Let's put our card together. For the plaid paper, I'm going to use the same one I had, which is this one. I just really like how it ties the colors. So I'm going to cut this four by five and a quarter. So if I were doing a, horse, a, a vertical card, I would keep this for the bottom. So I will keep it for another card. But I am doing the bottom of this card. And this plaid stripe right here is just perfect. So I'm going to, and you know, it just really doesn't matter what size you're using for the bottom. It's whatever you want to. So I don't really measure it. I just like that look. So I'm going to go to five and a quarter. And so this and this will go back in my little envelope here. And now I have my two pieces. All right. So this was glued down directly. We are almost done. But look how pretty that plaid paper really makes the card. I really, I know I've mentioned this before, but doing the Love It, Chop It by Kylie Bertucci, I have really been using a lot more DSP. I'm so happy, so proud of myself because I have a ton of designer series paper. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the middle and I just eyeball it, I don't get crazy. I'm going to add my dimensionals and I actually added them onto the bottom because I do want it popped up from the panel. I didn't put any on the top because it's just gonna lay even with the rest. So I just kind of put that up there the last thing I did, well, I'll do the last thing last. Let's finish this first. I am a hoarder of DSP, I know. Trust me, I know. Oh, I'm going to use, I am really loving the new adhesive. So I'm just going to go down and use that. All right, so that's done. Thanks, Carol. All right, so this DSP, I mean this new tape, it's all in how you angle it and I'm getting the hang of it. I am loving it. I just have to get used to how to hold it, but I'm getting better. And what I've also learned is if you start on here and then go onto your card, it will pick up and just go right along. So I like that. All right, so there's our inside. So see, there's no waste on your paper. And these are six by six. If you use the four by six, like I've done, like I told you from 12 by 12s, you don't have any leftover because you'll have this and then you'll have you know your your piece because this is going to be four and then this is going to be this is going to be six but it's more for vertical cards because it's already four so it's going to have this part down here but it's perfect for the vertical or horizontal no vertical sorry vertical all right so now we've done this i'm going to bring in my pieces of paper here and then i have one more thing after this I'm going to bring the ore. I'm going to bring in crumb cake, early espresso, all my browns that I used, um, and soft suede. So I'm starting with the lightest.
and I'm just changing direction. Okay, so now I'm just going to stamp it off and go to the next color because it is darker. I'm not worried about it. And I pretty much stamped everything off. So I want soft suede now. All right, so we're going to stamp that off. I think I'm gonna do one more right here. All right, so there's our the back of our card. Just kind of ties it in. We could put, put frogs or fishes or whatever you want. All right. So the last thing I did is um, this little guy here doesn't have any eyes. And his are there and the birds, but you can't see them that well. Well, I have these jelly glaze pins. I got them off of Amazon. And if you look on this, you can tell they're kind of shiny. They're little eyes. So all I do is make sure it's working. And then I just put a little eye and you just dot it. You don't want too much. You just want them to have an eyeball. This guy has eyes, but I just filled them in so they would be a little glazed and kind of give it that little glossy look. Well, that one did. I gotta get my pin going here. There we go. And then I did the same for the bird. And just one little dot. I don't know, you guys. Whenever I come close, it just drives me crazy. Anyway, so now they're there, and then I just let it dry. I'm going to do the fish, too. He's got an eyeball. you got to get the, it going. It's one of those wet, wet pins. All right, so there they are. I'm going to save these little pieces, and here's the original one. So it's all in the colors you choose and what you do. I know I wanted browns. I really liked the teal and the blue, the greens. And so um, I thought the shaded spruce looked really pretty with, with this. And, of course, I always look at the colors on here and see what's on your paper and then choose from there. So I hope that made sense thank you so much for joining me you guys as always i would appreciate your business i am an independent stampin up demonstrator and you can go to my blog it's marcybestaker.com that is my august host code if you could use that i would really appreciate it I am on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock and Sundays at noon. Thanks, Carol. I'd love to have you guys join me here. And to join me and get a reminder, if you could subscribe and hit the like button if you liked the card. Thanks, Felicia. I really was happy with the plaid paper. I need to, to figure out a use for the rest of it because I'm loving it. I always struggle with masculine cards, so I really liked tying that paper in with this. So if you guys could subscribe and share, I would really appreciate it. If you hit the like button, that would be so wonderful, and it would really help my YouTube channel. And it just brings us up to the top a little bit more so people can see our videos. And... If you ring the bell after you subscribe, you will get a notification of 
when I go live. So you can see me um, go live and say, oh, Marcy's live. I can go make it and, and um, come on over. Ooh, my hair's getting long. Who else's hair is just getting long? I can hardly stand it. I cut my husband's hair last night. He was so happy. Well, I'm determined, Carol, to start making some more masculine cards because it never fails that I need them. And I have a ton of female cards I could do. And so um, I've, I've been, I used that whiskey, whiskey card, and that was a lot of fun too. So anyway, thanks so much, you guys, for joining. I really appreciate it. I will see you on Sunday. Um, I might hop on before then because I do have a card idea that I might share before. So that would be a good time to subscribe so that you can get notified if I do. I also always go on to my Facebook page, which is Marcy Besslicker Designs. If you subscribe on there, I always post on there when I'm going live. So if it's not my regular day, I will post and say, I'm going live in an hour or at four o'clock or whatever. I am Pacific time. I'm in California. Um, but I always put PST so it'll remind you where I'm at and when, what time it'll be. And, um, then of course my blog is marcybesker.com. If you go over there and subscribe, I would really appreciate that too. Um, the cards and videos that I post on YouTube, I put into a blog post with some details, some sizes, uh, maybe more pictures, things like that. So you can um, always go back and reference that too, if you'd like. So I would appreciate you subscribing over there too. All right, you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I do have some links of videos coming up after this. Um, so if you take a look at them, that would be awesome. Have a great day and I will see you on Sunday, if not before. Thanks guys. Bye.